what I'm hoping that the chow line turns into, a cultural phenomenon. Who is Rick Sutherland? I'm Nick Pearl. I am Tay. That's it. I love to cook. I'm a business owner. Uh, father of two. I've been tattooing for almost uh, 35 years. Uh, great dad. Yeah, I'm a father. And uh, I try to be like a good member of the community and be a good human being these days. Because my past doesn't always reflect that, so. What else they need to know about me? Everything? I started working in television when I was very young, and then finally I became the director of Conan on uh, TBS. Now I'm into creating content, and I've got a couple of shows, and one of them is The Chow Line. I went from directing a Hall of Fame late night comedian to working with these three jackasses. What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Chow Line with Nick, Rick, and Tay. I'm Nick. I'm Rick. I'm Tay. And today, and today, and today, this episode's gonna be nuts. Woo yeah. Nick and I met in a 12-step program, if you can believe that. Um, that was about 15 years ago. Um, there's a little bit of an age difference, but Nick and I have just clicked uh, from the beginning. I was in high school, and I went outside, and I was about to smoke weed. My mom told me that I was gonna get drug tested after school. I found the one kid at school who didn't smoke weed, I asked him to pee in a bag for me, he did it, turned it in, and we were sitting in the waiting room. My mom comes out in tears. As fate would have it, I didn't test positive for weed, but I tested positive for coke, and my mom decided that it was time for me to go to a 12-step program. And that's where I met uh, Rick for the first time. I met Tay about 10 years ago. Each had our kids on a same basketball team, and this coach that we had was not qualified to be coaching. And I had never talked to him before, but I looked at him and I said, I think we could probably do better. And he said, I think you're right. Uh, turns out we know a lot of the same gang members and uh, we decided to start coaching our kids the next season. I met Rick two years ago through Nick on a ship going to a cruise and uh, we hit it off right away. Shit, from the way we just sized each other up. Shit, we've been rocking ever since. I think realistically, when you see us sitting together, we're very different uh, looking. But that has, man, that's nothing to do with it. We couldn't be closer. Rick will be talking about his wife, Andrea, and talking about, he'll say something like, my wife is so beautiful. I, I just think she's honestly the most gorgeous woman in the world. And Dante will be like, yeah, my wife's a bad bitch. And uh, they're saying the same thing, it's just different. So I realize they're the same person. Hey, bitches, <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> And this is how they're really <laughs> So to tell you how I thought Chow Line would become a great TV show, I have to take you back to what was my fake bachelor party. And while we were there, I realized just how picky of eaters they were. For Rick, that was, I'm not eating frog legs, and just watching him try and eat it. And for Dante, it was at breakfast. I told him about prosciutto and melon. Dante goes, ham and fucking fruit? Fast forward about eight months, I was at a birthday party with Billy. I ended up pitching him an awful cooking show. And um, I said, okay. And then he called me another, like, two days later. He's like, this is going to be the worst show ever. And I was going through my phone, and I saw pictures of Dante eating prosciutto and melon and Rick with a frog leg in his mouth. And it just hit me. He goes, what if I bring in my two buddies and we have them on the show? We look so different, but we have so many things in common, and our chemistry is incredible that this would be the show. I'm like, OK, do they cook? He goes, no, but they were in prison. I'm like, perfect, let's do it. I am not qualified to host this show, but I just love cooking. Um, when I was a kid, my mom told me, women love a man who knows how to cook, uh, and I sort of just took that and ran with it. I'm from a cooking family. My mother used to cook a lot. I'm a lot of big picky. It was not very exotic, uh, you know, things like uh, Hamburger Helper. Uh, but my favorite dish was that you know, my mom would make chicken with like uh, breadcrumbs on it and butter. It was really good. Growing up, adopted with my aunt, we, we had, she took me to McDonald's and shit, so. I ate commercial food. Childhood shit right here. They eating this shit before I could talk. My addiction to Red Rooster started 
when I was like five or six because I used to, I was born sucking my finger. So my mom used to try everything to try to get me to stop. So she put hot sauce on my finger. I've been eating the shit ever since. But yeah, Red Rooster in every hood near you. When I'm on a child line and Nick is cooking, I'm nervous. When Nick's cooking, I am always worried. I know he can cook really well, but I know he's not going to cook none of the shit we like. You know, the episode with the testicle. Oh, man, y'all crazy. I mean, come on, man, that's, uh, <laughs> We're going to need therapy after this. Mm. No, no, no. But I got to be honest, uh, Nick's cooking is really good. I think he likes to experiment on Dante and I, and mm. that's the part that makes it hard for me. <laughs> for the most part, I already know I'm game. I just, I ain't fucking with no seafood or no balls. Everything else, I'm open-minded. For those of you who have never been misfortunate enough to be on a county or state-funded vacation, one of the things that you can do is you can order some stuff off of the commissary, usually involving, you know, stuff like this, various items like chips, things like that. We'll show you how to make that into an actual delicacy. I have never been to prison, not for them lack of trying, but uh, I've done a lot of county jail time, sadly. I think what happened to me over the years was uh, it went from kind of being a scary environment to becoming a comfortable environment. And that's, you know, that's kind of what drugs do to you, first of all, but um, that level of acceptance was not okay with me. It was one of the things that kind of pushed me to, you know, want to change my life. And, uh, you know, weird thing, I got clean and I stopped going to jail. That was weird. Maybe there's a correlation there, I don't know. <laughs> I've never did like um, prison time or like long, long ass bids. It's just when you hang out with the wrong crowd, again, you don't know it's the wrong crowd because being in an environment, the people you choose to hang around with, you ride or die for them, with them, whatever happens, happens. I was born in this shit. My mom grew up in the streets. My, my grandparents were gone. Like I grew up homeless pretty much. Um, slept at parks, hotels, foster homes. I've been adopted, I've been rejected. The courts don't understand. We grew up the way we grew up. It was, we didn't have an option. We don't have a choice. You know, I became willing to do whatever it took to, to change that and turn it around. So I went to 12 step meetings. It's kind of a no brainer that that was a good decision. You know, so the party was over for Rick, but don't worry, I did enough drugs for everybody. <laughs> I'm just a voice for the hood. And that's why, I, you know, Nick gave me the call and I'm like, you know, I'll do it. I'm ready. Welcome well, to try this at home because I don't recommend going in there to try it. So. During the pandemic, my life changed drastically. I had been a regional manager up until August of 2020 when I had been laid off. Uh, by then, I had already started a side hustle making fresh pasta from scratch. Uh, and I decided when I got laid off that I was going to see how far I could take making fresh pasta, ravioli, pizza dough, sauce uh, for Buono, which is uh, my company. I uh, was in a long-term relationship. We had an incredible wedding. It was absolutely beautiful. We did a, like a miniature honeymoon, got home. She let me know that she was leaving me for the guy she had been seeing for a few months. <laughs> so the end of that relationship changed my life in every way imaginable. I made a decision that I was going to pursue my dreams. I was gonna take risks. I was gonna get to know who I was. And uh, I've done all those things. My dream is for is working for Billy and doing this show. My, uh, this is my passion, it, has, it has, covers everything. If we could make this a success and make people happy, um, you know, we, um, we go online and we look at how many views and we look at the comments and people are, for the most part, very, very positive about it. So we feel like, we feel like we're doing something good and it's just a couple of us just having fun and making some food and telling stories. And um, if this goes and becomes something really great, um, we're all gonna have jobs for a long time. And I can afford to pay you. <laughs> Come on, they, they, he, he smoked a bull nut. Four of them. Why are you laughing? This shit is crazy. Well, when my grandma watches the show with me, when I get with her and we sit down and we have a shot in the joint, we, um, we watch it and she laughs at me. She loves the fact that I'm I have white friends. You know, growing up, 
the white people only own the building. You know, I, I keep showing up because I'm just having fun with my friends. That's really all it is. The three guys on the chow line are some of the most fantastic human beings I've worked with. And I'm proud that I was able to create a show that can put them out there and let people get to know them. You have three people from completely different walks of life, but you see that there's genuine love between the three of us. The amount of fun that we have should be seen and celebrated. Cut the check, bitch!